KPBS North County Bureau Chief Allison St. John has covered the story since it started a year and a half ago. She joins me now with the latest details on the decision to permanently close San Onofre. Allison, welcome. Tell us what's behind this decision. Well, this morning, Ted Craver, who is the CEO of Edison International, the parent company of Edison that operates the plant, said that the company basically had two options. There was the option of shutting it down or the option of going with this application to restart one of the units at 70% power for five months. And they had this application in before the NRC. Last month, or a little over a month ago, Craver came out and told investors, look, if we don't get permission to start restart the plant within the end of the year, we may have to decide to shut it down. And recently, there was a decision from the Atomic Licensing Board that suggested that maybe it was going to take a lot longer than they'd hoped. Um, the Atomic Licensing Board upheld a request from the Friends of the Earth for a public hearing. And if that had gone ahead, it would have been next year sometime before any decisions. So they're and, cutting... And part, part of that decision about, I remember when that announcement was made a month ago, was about how much this was costing to just sort of be hanging on, correct? <laughs> Well, that's right. And, and in fact, what uh, Craver suggested was that the cost of keeping going was, was more than it was worth, so they decided to cut their losses. He said that it was costing them $800 million so far since January to just maintain and operate the plant in a condition where it could be restarted if that decision was made, and more than $500 million in order to find replacement power. So over a billion dollars just to kind of wait and see, and today they said we're done. So far, $1.3 billion, that's right. So they were cutting their losses by saying, let's pull the plug right now. Well, remind us of what caused this radiation leak in the first place and what caused everything to, to be shut down in the first place. Well, it all started with what was billed as a, a small radiation leak in one of the tubes of one of the steam generators, which had only just been replaced, actually, a year or a little over a year before that. And it turns out that the manufacturer of those steam generators, Mitsubishi, had had a faulty modeling uh, number in its computer system. So the thermal um, fluid Elastic instability is the technical term for what happened as a result of this computer modeling error. And as a result, all the tubes, hundreds and hundreds of tubes, rattled more than they were supposed to, and some of them became dangerously thin. One of them actually ruptured, which was what caused that leak. The company had to plug hundreds of tubes, and the question was, could they fix it so that it would be safe, or would there be more ruptures in the future? Okay. And then um, is Edison accepting any blame for what happened or are they just tossing that back to Mitsubishi? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Craver did say we, we questioned Mitsubishi back in 2004, 2005 about the design. We knew it was a big design change. Um, but he's saying that if they had done any more than that, it would have been like intrusive mm. so that he feels they did as much as they, they was warranted in terms of oversight. So he admits that the Edison is, in fact, the, the um, responsible party, but, and they are going off to Mitsubishi for insurance money, but he is saying that the company did everything they could, and in fact, he says he doesn't really think it would have been caught if they had done any more oversight. That's what he said. Okay. What about the ramifications of this shutdown, permanently shutting down this? What's going to happen with the ratepayers? This is something we've talked about again and again. Well, <clears throat> we just talked about the $1.3 billion, and that is the amount that's on the table, although some people might add the $700 million that it costs to install those new steam generators, which brings the figure up to more than $2 billion, which is what the ratepayers are on the hook for. For. And, of course, the California Public Utilities Commission right now is in the midst of an investigation. They're trying to nail down what exactly are the costs and is it reasonable to ask the ratepayers to pay for that. So this is going to be decommissioned. That's going to say, take some time. Tell us uh, what that's like and, and mm. what happens when you decommission the, the plant. Well, this is, as you say, not the end of the situation because, uh, first of all, they have to take the fuel out and put it into a cooling pond and then they'll put it into stainless steel casks. And uh, Mr. Craver said that until the federal government makes a decision as to what to do with nuclear power nationwide, they will stay on site. Um, the decommissioning fund that has been being collected ever since the plant opened is now at $2.7 billion, which sounds like a lot, but apparently that's only 90% of what they estimate it will cost to completely decommission this plant. So there could be more cost to ratepayers if, if it goes that direction. Well, KPBS North County Bureau Chief Allison St. John, thank you so much. I want I'll let folks know that for more information or to comment on this story, you can go to our website. We have a special spot for you, kpbs.org slash San Onofre.